In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert a quadratic equation in standard form to vertex form with and without using the completing the square method. So let's use the completing the square method first. So this is the standard form of a quadratic equation. It's y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And vertex form looks like this. It's y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k where the vertex is h comma k now let's say if we have an equation in standard form let's say it's y is equal to x squared minus 6x minus 7 now let's use the completing the square technique so the first thing you want to do is write the first two terms, x squared minus 6x. Then consider this number, negative 6. Take half of that number and square it. Half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9. But I'm going to write it as 3 squared instead of 9 for now. Now because I added 9 to the right side, I need to either add 9 to the left side or subtract 9 from the right side in order that the equation on the right side still have the same value. Now let's factor x squared minus 6x plus 3 squared. To factor it, it's going to be whatever variable you see here, in this case x, minus, and then this number, 3, squared. That's the quick and simple way to factor it. And then combine these two. Negative 7 minus 9 is uh, negative 16. So this is the answer in vertex form using the completing the square technique. But now let's see if we can get the same answer without using the completing the square method. Now what we need to do is find the coordinates of the vertex. To find the x coordinate of the vertex, it's going to be negative b over 2a. a is the number in front of x squared. a is 1, b is negative 6, c is negative 7, based on the standard form ax squared plus bx plus c. So the x coordinate of the vertex is going to be negative, and we said b is negative 6, and a is 1. So this is 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So the x-coordinate is 3. Now we need to find the y-coordinate. So let's plug in 3 into the original equation. So it's going to be uh, 3 squared minus 6 times 3 minus 7. 3 squared is 9. 6 times 3 is 18. And 9 minus 18 is negative 9. Negative 9 minus 7 is negative 16. So h is negative 16. Now that we have the coordinates of the vertex, and also we know that a is the number in front of x squared, so a is 1, we can now write the equation in vertex form, which is a times x minus h squared plus k. So it's going to be a, which is 1, times x minus h, which is 3, squared plus k which is negative 16. So notice this is the same equation that we got earlier. So now you have two techniques of converting a quadratic equation in standard form to vertex form. You can either find the vertex and just plug it in into this formula or you can use the completing the square technique. For the sake of practice let's try another one. Let's say y is equal to 2x squared plus 8x minus 5. Now let's use the completing the square technique to convert it from standard form to vertex form first and then we'll use the other uh, technique as well. So notice that this time the leading coefficient is 2. Whenever you see that you need to take out the GCF from the first two terms. 
So if we take out a 2, 2x squared divided by 2 is equal to uh, x squared. And 8x divided by 2 is 4x. And let's leave a space. So now let's complete the square. So look at the middle term, the number that's in front of x. We need to take half of that value and then square it. Half of 4 is 2, and let's square it. So it's going to be 2 squared. Now notice that we added 2 squared times 2 to the right side of the equation. 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. So to have the, or to maintain the same value on the right side, since we added 8, we need to subtract 8 as well. So now let's factor. So here's the quick and simple way of factoring it. It's going to be x plus this number, 2, and then squared. You can literally see everything you need in that expression. And negative 5 minus 8 is negative 13. So this is the answer in vertex form. Now let's see if we can use the other technique to get the same answer. So we already have a. a is the number in front of x squared. So therefore, a is equal to 2. Now let's find the x coordinate of the vertex, which we know it to be negative b divided by 2a. So b is the number in front of x, which is uh, 8, and a is 2. So this is negative 8 divided by 4, so uh, b is, uh, I mean, x is negative 2. So now let's take this value, plug it into the original equation, and let's find the value of y. So it's going to be 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 minus 5. Negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4. And 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. 8 minus 16 is negative 8. Negative 8 minus 5 is negative 13. So therefore, we have the coordinates negative 2, negative 13. So this is the, the coordinate of the vertex. And the vertex equation is a x minus h squared plus k. So a is 2. And h is negative 2. And k is negative 13. So this is going to be two negatives will turn into a positive. So it's x plus 2 squared minus 13, which is what we had before. So this is the answer. Now let's try one last example, but a more challenging one. So let's say that y is equal to 3x squared plus 5x minus 7. So let's complete the square first. So let's take out the 3. 3x three squared divided by 3 is x squared, and 5x divided by 3 is 5 over 3x. Let's leave a space and then minus 7. So now let's complete the square. What is half of 5 over 3? If you multiply 5 over 3 times half, you're going to get 5 over 6. So this is going to be plus 5 over 6 squared. Now, since we added 5 over 6 squared times 3 to the right side, we need to subtract the right side by 3 times 5 over 6 squared. So now let's complete the square, or let's factor at least. So it's going to be x plus 5 over 6 squared. It's always going to work out that way. You can literally see everything that you need. So this is x plus 5 over 6 and then squared. And then minus 7 minus 3. 5 squared is uh, 25. And 6 squared is 36. So what we now have is y is equal to 3x plus 
5 over 6 squared minus 7. And we can reduce this expression because 3 goes into 36. If you divide it backwards, 36 divided by 3 is 12. So it turns out that this is negative 25 over 12. Now we need to get common denominators. So let's multiply 7 over 1 by 12 over 12. So what is 7 times 12? 7 times 10 is 70. 7 times 2 is 14. If you add 70 and 14, you get 84. So this is negative 84 over 12 minus 25 over 12. So when you add these two, this is going to give you negative 109 over 12. So therefore, the equation in vertex form is 3 times x plus 5 over 6 squared minus 109 over 12. So now let's see if we can get the same answer using the other technique. So the original equation was uh, 3x squared plus 5x minus 7. So let's calculate the x value. By the way, we could see that a is equal to 3. So x is negative b divided by 2a, which is negative 5 divided by 2 times 3, which is negative 5 over 6. So that's the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now let's calculate the y-coordinate. So let's find the y-value when x is negative 5 over 6. So it's going to be 3 times negative 5 over 6 squared plus 5 times negative 5 over 6 minus 7. 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is uh, 36. 5 times 5 is 25. And this is going to be 7 over 1. So 36 divided by 3 we said it's uh, 12. So this is 25 over 12. Now let's multiply this fraction by 2 over 2. So it's going to be negative 50 over 12. And then let's multiply this fraction by 12 over 12. And we know that 7 times 12 is 109. Well, I do take that back. 7 times 12 is not 109. It's actually 84. And uh, let's continue. So let's get rid of some stuff. So 25 minus 50 is negative 25. And negative 25 minus 84, that's negative 109 over 12. So now we have the y-coordinate of the vertex, which is negative 109 divided by 12. So now we can write the equation in vertex form. So let's start with the vertex equation, which is y is equal to a x minus h squared plus k. So a is 3, and h is negative 5 over 6, and k is negative 109 divided by 12. So we could see that the answers do indeed match. So this is going to be 3 times x plus 5 over 6, let's not forget to square it, minus 109 over 12. So now you have two techniques to write the equation in vertex form from standard form.